Chris Buzelis, and then you tell me how you what you think of him. But I I love him. <laughs> um, even <laughs> now, even as much as I love Ron Holland, I think I still have Buzelis over him. I haven't even made the. I know you made your big board already. I haven't did mine, but I think I'll have him ahead of Ron Holland. Um, but I love his basketball IQ. I I love his uh, shot making ability. Uh, he knows who he is. He knows how to get to his spots. He's very smooth, doesn't rush anything. Um, I think defensively, while he's not like a point of attack defender or anything like that, I think he could be a really great help defender, um, especially when you have somebody like, you know, Wim Banyama uh, lurking around. I, I think he's really going to shine uh, with that type of environment. But just overall, I, I, I like him a lot with his size um, and, and cultural wise as well. Like watch interviews of him. Seems like a great kid, very smart. Um, but yeah, I think those are just my overall, as far as concerns, I don't have that many to be real with you. Uh, I know that he was really inconsistent from three early on, but I, I'm not really, I'm not really that concerned. Cause I think you've even mentioned this to me, like how his shooting was, you know, much better prior to this. So, you know, it might've just been an adjustment thing and, and going to the G league is pretty tough. Uh, you know, going against grown men and everything, but uh, so what what are your what are your overall thoughts about Modest Buzelis? Where would you take him? Would you take him over? I don't think you would take him over Holland, right? But like, what's your what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't think I'd take him over Holland, but I definitely take him. I I like Buzelis. He's another one I think a lot of people overthink. I mean, different kind of player in the sense that you know he's he's not as athletic or you know much of a defensive stopper yeah yeah um he's a good weak side defender he's not really like an on ball defender and i think laterally he's a bit slow to stay in front of guys completely at the next level yeah um but i mean we've had really bad defender in that small forward spot so you know i i guess he's an upgrade over that i mean i, I think he's a good at changes of speed he's creative he's got for his size he's got pretty good wiggle when he has the ball mm. uh he plays under control and all that you know sets the floor well makes some pretty good passes to people i mean uh, to me the the thing with him kind of similar to what i said with uh Risa Shea, not as much, so much with the strength he does need to improve that but uh yeah I feel like he's a little too straight up when he handles a lot of times, similar with Risa Shea, and, and, you know, he picks up his dribble a little too early, too often. So you think you um, think he's going to turn the ball over a lot? That's what you're saying. They're all going to turn the ball over a lot. They're rookies. Yeah, but... <laughs> For God's sake, how many turnovers did generational Wimbanyama <laughs> have yeah. this season per game? Yeah, that's true. I mean, this is the thing. They, they are not perfect players by any means. They, they are going, all of them are going to have low moments and high moments uh, during this season here. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing about Brazil is, like you said, his mechanics look good. He's had inconsistencies with his shot, but he's shown ability over time to, you know, keep those consistent and improve. He doesn't have a lot of bad misses. And frankly, when he's in more of a catch and shoot role, he thrives a lot better. Um like I said, you know, need, I think he needs to speed up his release a little bit. He's a little slow on that. Um, that is true. We literally, but, got, uh, I, mean, I literally got his him practicing right now. You can tell is is pretty slow. Yeah, to me, the biggest weakness there is when he gets contacted. It usually throws him off balance, so it kind of limits his effectiveness when he has the ball. But again, I don't see him as being an on-ball guy. You yeah. know, it's it's going to be him playing probably a three or even a four role. Uh, where you know, he he doesn't have to create much, and he was having to do much more than he should have on this G League team. Um, so, yeah, it's I mean I know people won't like to hear that. Oh, he's he's going to be like a role player, third option kind of guy, but I don't really see anybody in this draft that I can say for certain is going to be one of those top option guys. But also, we don't need that. We have that already. I know this. Um, is, so I, mean, I think he fits. I've heard he interviews really, really well with yeah. teams. He he knows what. I don't know if it's just he knows what to say or he actually believes it. But teams seem to really like him personality wise. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. You mentioned him um, with the G League, and I, I think that it's a little ironic because this is what we need. But I feel like a lot of the hate that he gets is the fact that he had to handle the ball a lot and he didn't have a like traditional point guard on that team. Am I right? Or 
I mean, they they didn't, and that that hurt a lot because both him and Holland. I mean, yeah. every single one of them, you know, had to do way more than what they're used to doing. He he has never been. Uh, well, maybe in high school when you know he's a phenomenon on a, a team with lesser players and all that. Same with Holland, but. You know, they they were not called upon to be the point guards and stuff like that. And all of a sudden they are. It's it's a different game, especially when I mean, you know, they're they're playing against lottery picks That's from true. other teams that are in the G League in in some instances. I mean, they played against Oklahoma City and Usman Jang was in there that they're playing against. You know, these are guys who have been in the NBA for years and and grown men who were great in college who are out there. So they're they're gonna struggle. Yeah, that's just how it works. Um, but uh, yeah, I I think he's going to be a fine player. I, I know a lot of people say, oh, he's most likely to bust, and you know he could. You never know what's going to happen with the guys, but he's got enough of a definable skill set. I'd, I'd be fine with taking him. Yeah, and I like I like his craftiness too. Like I said, I, I'm just a sucker for guys that know their spots, can get to their spots, and like you said, he's not the most athletic person in the world or anything like that. Um, but man, he he will he will find his his spot, and you can't really stop him from doing what he wants to do when he gets hot. But like you say, he, he has to him, he has to get uh, some weight. We watched him kind of take over in that three uh, uh those uh what you call it games of the All Star game. I think he had the G League team playing against Wemby's team. Yeah, yeah, they beat him. Yeah, I mean, he played really well there. I think I think his game translates much better to being kind of an off ball guy than it does in that on ball role he had there. Yeah, and if it comes down to it, right now, just how I'm feeling, if if it's at four, I'm taking him over uh, Holland. But you would still take Holland. I think I would take Holland over him, but I, I'm not gonna. That's the thing. The nature of this draft is I have my guys. I say, oh, I want them to take, but I. It's not a if loss they take for you. Any of them, I'm not gonna complain about yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's not a loss for you. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Let's let's take a look at. I actually did a a poll here. Let's see what the people said. I said, do you want modest at four? Sixty-seven percent said no. Thirty-three percent said yeah. Thoughts on that? Are they all wrong? I told you that would happen. They're all wrong. <laughs> I don't know if it's wrong, but I've, I've just seen, it seems that throughout this draft process, I've been much higher on Buzelis than the consensus. Yeah. Um, so I expect that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the the thing I that's interesting is I see polls like that all the time. And it's between two players and it's always a usually a no for somebody and that's the thing i cannot get a gauge on who people actually really want us to take it for it's they, such they a don't, year for this I, th I think it's really going off i mean i'm not trying to be a, a jerk or anything you know i don't sit here and you know watch every single game known to man but I, I think it really does come down to narrative and what's kind of going around um because i mean everyone would have said dilly literally just a couple months ago uh, now it's like no way that they would take Dilly at four. Um, now it's Risa Shea and it's, oh, Holland, they loved Holland a few months ago, but now Holland, uh, no, we don't want him even at eight. So it's, I think it just depends on what's going around, what the professionals, the professionals are saying, you know, but uh, we all know that sometimes they're pretty, you know, they have an incentive to go certain ways, uh, what they have to say. Um, okay, well, cool. Let's, uh, let's move on then move on 